This is the year of kingdom transformation and today we're going to be sharing on the subject of kingdom transformation. Kingdom transformation. Say that with me. Say kingdom transformation. I'm going to begin in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 which is our foundation scriptures for this series and it begins like this. It says, therefore I urge you. Everybody say urge you. If somebody urges you to do something, it means that they are pressing. They're saying, you got to do this. He said, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Everybody say living sacrifices. There's a dead sacrifice and there's a living sacrifice. A dead sacrifice is someone who's already expired, something that has already expired, you put it on the altar. But a living sacrifice is still alive. And the Bible says we are supposed to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. In other words, even though your body is alive and your body would like to do certain things, you kill the desires of your flesh so that your spirit can arise. It says, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. This is your true and proper worship. If you want to worship, worship God, worship him as a living sacrifice. Sacrifice while you're alive. Don't say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to sacrifice, because no sacrifice is needed. By the way, let's give a big round of applause to Minister Tracy and his lovely wife who are here with us this morning. Thank you for leading us into the presence again after many, many, many years. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And then it goes on to say this. It says, do not conform. Say that with me. Say, do not conform. Now, when it says, do not conform, what does that mean? Do not conform. <laughs> it means that there's a possibility that you could conform. There's a temptation to conform. There's an incentive to conform. But he says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. So this world has a pattern. And if you've been here more than one year, you figure out what the pattern is. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Now, I want you to notice something. If God said, be transformed, does it follow that there's a possibility that you can be transformed? He wouldn't instruct you to do something that's not within your realm of capability. So he says, be transformed. So he's telling you, this is an order. This is not a suggestion. He's not saying, well, you know, you have the option to be transformed or not be transformed. He said, be transformed. How do you become transformed? By the renewing of your mind. So we are instructed to be transformed. It's not an option. So all of us are supposed to be transformed. We, 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 we live a transformed life. It says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing, and perfect will. Good, pleasing, and perfect is determined by how much you are transformed. If you are minimally transformed, then you just get the good. If you are transformed on a higher level, then you become pleasing. If you are absolutely transformed, then you are in the perfect will of God. Amen? And I don't want the pleasing... I don't want third place. I want the prize. The Apostle Paul said it like this. He said, I press toward the mark of third place. He said, I don't want third place. I want the prize. And so every day, I strive for the prize. Is anybody here today, you strive for the prize? Amen, amen, amen. 
Now here's the thing about transformation. Salvation is instantaneous. So the minute you receive Christ into your heart, you're born again, you're made new. But transformation is a process. That's why he says, be transformed. And then he said, renew your mind. So in other words, the transformation is a process and it requires keep to keep doing something over and over again. Keep renewing your mind. Renew means to make new again. So every day of your life, you get up in the morning and you start talking to yourself. You renew your mind. You make your mind new every day. I am the head of not the tail. I am blessed. I am favored. The Lord is with me. My help comes from the Lord. You keep talking to yourself. Why? Because you're going through the process of transformation. Everybody say process. Now what does transform mean? Transform means to change shape, character, or form. So if you transform something, it begins in one shape, one character, or one form, and it evolves into something else. So if you're being transformed, it means you may start out as, you know, someone who is um, overweight. And as you apply the principles, you become transformed. I remember Pastor Angie and I used to go to Miami all the time to see this particular uh, vendor. And um, we hadn't gone to Miami for about maybe a year or two. I can't remember how long it was. But this young lady, she, when we first met her, she was about 300 pounds. Or 200 and something, at least 200 and something pounds, maybe 300 pounds. And every year we would go and we would see her and do business and we would talk to her. And then one year we went to the establishment and we, we went in to, 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 to look for her, and we got there, and we said, um, where is Susan? Let's say her name was Susan. And we're looking around for Susan, and you say, do, do you know where Susan is? She said, I am Susan. <laughs> and I was like, well, where did the rest of you go? <laughs> and you know what she said? She said she made a decision. She had some mishap. And she said she woke up one day and she made a decision that she was going to transform her body. So she changed her diet and she got a treadmill and every day she exercised. And over a period of years, she eliminated, she was transformed. And that's what God is saying to us. God is saying, this is, this is what you look right now, look like right now. You're overweight. You need to lose some weight. The Bible says, get rid of those weights, the sin and the weight. So some of us, we are spiritually overweight. We have sin and all kinds of things weighing us down. And God says, be transformed. Get on the spiritual treadmill. <laughs> Renew your mind so that you can become what God desired you to be. Is anybody with me today? Another definition of transformed is, comes from the word metamorpho. Many of us are familiar with that word, right? Metamorpho, which where we get the word metamorphosis from. When we think of metaphor, metamorphosis, we think of, of the, 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 the cocoon and the butterfly. It's a, trans, it's a process of transformation. It doesn't happen immediately. The caterpillar to the butterfly. And then I also thought of another example of something that happens through a process versus something that happens instantaneously. So if you have a tank of, if you have a tank of gas and you light a match to it, it explodes right away, but it's gone in a matter of minutes or hours or whatever it is. But you know, if you put that same gas in a tank, and you harness it properly, you can drive for 300 miles on that tank. Why? Because the gas is being used and it's, it, it's transformed from just a substance into something that produces for you. Are you with me? Everybody say, be transformed. Now, I want you to notice from the scripture that there are two important steps 
in transformation. What are those two important steps? The first one is do not conform. You cannot be transformed if you conform. And so every day there's a fight for us. Each one of us, we have this challenge where we want to conform. The world pressures you into conforming. The world says, this is the way you do it. And most of it makes no sense whatsoever, but the devil has so much deceived us that we, 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 we decide to follow a pattern that doesn't make sense. Somebody says to you, well, drink this. Now, mind you, everybody who drank, well, not everybody, but several people who drank it, they became alcoholics and they got messed up and everything, and then you just decide, I'm going to do this, even though I know it harmed other people. I'm going to get high, even though I know many, many people have gotten addicted. It's like something is wrong with us. The Bible says the God of this world blinds our minds, so we can't even see. And we conform to something that creates a disadvantage. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine waking up one day and say, you know, I am just going to drive off of a cliff because I saw other people drive off of a cliff. They died, but I'm going to do it because it's what's happening in the world. <laughs> what would you call somebody like that? But Lewis, what would you call him? <laughs> but Lewis says, insane, and thank you. They, they are with us all the way from Canada, our, our Bahamian Canadians. So God instructs us, he said, do not conform. And so you have to make a decision not to conform. And it's not always easy. If it was easy, then nobody would conform. But it's a hard thing. Why? Because our flesh is insane in the brain. Our flesh does things that does not make sense. The Bible says we are drawn away by lust. Lust means wrong desires. So we go after things that are harmful to us. So the first step is do not conform. Everybody say do not conform. The second step is renew your mind. So the first step is do not conform. And the second step is renew your mind. So you decide not to follow the pattern of the world and then you renew your mind. So you, 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 you continually remind yourself of, of what you're supposed to be. You know, last night I talked about the story of, uh, of Dodie Osteen, and she did something very interesting. You know, the pattern of the world was to accept that, you know, sickness, cancer is incurable, and there's nothing you can do. But she decided not to conform to the pattern of the world. But guess what? You know what she said? She said every night when she would go to bed, when she was alone, these thoughts would come to her and say, you're going to die, you're going to die. And so she would wake up in the morning and she would pull up the scripture that says, you're going to live, you're going to live, you're going to live. And every time the thoughts came around and said, you're going to die, you're going to die, she said, no, I'm going to live, I'm going to live, I'm going to live. And that's what we have to do. We have to renew our mind. We have to keep telling our mind things that does not make sense to the flesh. You may have no money. But you say, you know what, my God will supply all of my needs. I don't know how it's coming, but I am believing, and I'm going to keep telling myself that he's going to supply my needs. You know, I remember I, I, was, I was speaking at my brother-in-law's funeral a, a month or two ago, and I remember when I, when I went to ORU, and I wasn't even saved. And he, did, he wasn't working at the time. He was a tennis player, and so he used to teach a little tennis lessons, but he wasn't working an income, and he had a wife and a child. And I remember us coming home to his house. And when we came home to the house, he opened the door, and there were some envelopes under the door. And then he opened the envelope, and there was a $100 bill, and then another one was a $50 bill. And I said, well, where did that come from? And he showed me a scripture that he had taped on the fridge. And the scripture said, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He said, I don't have a job now, but God is going to take care of me. And it wasn't that he wasn't looking for a job. He was looking for a job and he was hustling. But he said, in the meantime, I'm going to trust God. And so he confessed that every day and it became a reality. You got to renew your mind. Everybody say, renew your mind. 
touch the person next to you and say, you got to renew your mind. In order to not conform, we have to be determined, but not goofy. You know what goofy is? <laughs> you see, sometimes we get a misconception about conformity and not conformity, and so we decide to create this persona that does not make sense to God. We go around, you know, acting extra spiritual, acting goofy. You know, you walk into a situation and, and, and you start telling everybody, you know, glory to God, um, you know, I'm a believer and, you know, uh, I, I serve the Lord. And, and you know, you're making yourself obvious, you, you, you're being obnoxious, you're being goofy. He didn't say, do not be conformed by being goofy. You have to determine not to be conformed. And if you want to know how to not conform, all you have to do is look at Jesus. How did Jesus operate? The Bible says people accuse them of hanging around with sinners and publicans. And guess what? He did hang around with them, but he did not conform to them. He was transformed by the renewing of his mind. So every, every, every gathering he went to, I'm sure there were people who were drunk and they were coming, uh, Jesus, <laughs> how you doing, man? You want, you want to take a couple of sips of that? You know? <laughs> And Jesus said, no thanks. He said, man, I got some wine. This wine is so good. <laughs> Your wine don't compare with this. He said, man, I got some new wine. Amen? Amen. So he, he, was, he, he mixed with a lot of people, but he never blended. He didn't conform. And he, shows us, he showed us the way how to exist. You see, you can, you, you can be normal. You can even be fly. You know, I'm a fly dude, but I'm a kingdom citizen. And so you can operate in the environment of the world and be very different, but don't be goofy. You know, some people, they, they feel like, you know, I have to stand out to my attire. So I have to buy some Christian clothes. Let me wear all white. And let me not, don't, don't wear makeup, don't, don't, don't do anything, and you know, and, 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 and after a while, you actually look ugly. And so you are not conforming, but it's not a blessing. People are looking at you and say, well, if you represent the kingdom, I don't want to be kingdom. <laughs> so you want to be determined, but not goofy, amen? Here's the thing I want you to remember about the kingdom. The kingdom produces transformation. If you are not transformed, it's not kingdom. Because Jesus said, and the Bible says, and, and the Apostle Paul said, be transformed. So we got to be transformed. My question to you is this. What happened to you since you entered the kingdom of God? Have you been transformed? If you haven't been transformed, then you have to check yourself. Because he said, do not conform to this world and be transformed. So if you are not transformed, you have to ask yourself, how am I appropriating the kingdom of God in my life? The kingdom and transformation go together. You know, I, 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 was, in, I was in New York recently, and um, I, I was having dinner with somebody, and someone mentioned, I just mentioned one of the members of our church, you know, I, I mentioned Dr. Kendall Major, and the guy said, I said, yeah, I remember him. He changed. Now, I don't know what had happened before, but something changed, and it was obvious. <laughs> What do they say about you? Do they say you change? If, if, they, if, they don't, if they don't see a change in you, it means you haven't been transformed yet. You need to go back. You need to work. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. One of the greatest examples of transformation is the apostle Peter. It says, this is Peter talking to Jesus before he was crucified. Peter answered and said to him, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. So he was making a bold statement. He was saying, I'm committed to you. Jesus said to him, I, assuredly I say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not. And what happened? He denied him. But something happened between that incident 
and a few weeks later. Because in a few weeks later, in Acts chapter 22, this man who was a fisherman, who was not eloquent, who was not known as a leader, he was known as somebody who was impulsive. This man stood up, and 3,000 people came into the kingdom, and he said, Judeans and everyone, listen up. Can you imagine that? He said, let it be known to all of, you, all of Israel that God has made him both Lord and Messiah. This Jesus who you crucified. Where did he get the boldness from? You see, he was transformed. When, when Jesus met him, his name was Simon. You know what Simon means? Simon means leaf. Simon means fickle. And he said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that you are transformed from leaf into rock. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, man, I'm going to make you the rock. Amen? Anybody been transformed today? You thank God for transformation. If you are not transformed, it's not kingdom or it's not fully appropriated. I'm not saying you're not in the kingdom. It means that you are not appropriating the kingdom. And you can be in the kingdom and not appropriate the kingdom. You can be in the kingdom and not benefit from the kingdom. So you have to make a conscious effort to be transformed. If the kingdom is in you, you will not be the same. People will look at you and they, they will say that you are different. I was talking to my wife this morning and I just asked her a question and I didn't realize um, what, what was happening. But, you know, I, I remember it, it was 1985. I had just gotten married and I had to go to Guyana for a business trip for the government. And I'm on the government service and while I was in Guyana, they had, I just got married, but they had several women who were after me. Now, I had gotten saved a few years before, and before I got saved, you know, one of the things that I liked was women of different distinctions. <laughs> and so, I had a seminal moment to see if I was really transformed. And I remember this one young lady, one was subtle and one wasn't subtle at all. She just came right out. And she was like, you know, Mr. Burroughs, can I come over to your place tonight? I was like, for what? She said, what you think? <laughs> I said, no, 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 you ain't coming over to my place. And then, you know, she proceeded to, to harass me. And I had a couple of them harassing me. I don't know if I ever told my wife the level of harassment, but it was harassment. And the funny thing about it is, later on, the, the young lady, she came to, to, the, to the Bahamas. And so when she came to the Bahamas, you know, I was, my wife and I, we showed her hospitality. And I got her a place to stay at a relative's house. And so when she came to, my, to, to talk to my wife, she's, my, my wife said, who are you? She said, well, I'm Mr. Burroughs' concubine. <laughs> <laughs> so all these years, my wife thought it was a joke. <laughs> And she didn't realize, I, I, she might, I, I don't know if the, if, if the outcome might have been as good if she knew <laughs> what this girl was doing. But you see, I was transformed. Huh? Pastor Angie said she wouldn't have laid hands on us, she would have prayed for us. <laughs> but you see, a transformation had to take place because my behavior was completely different than what it, what it was before. And when transformation takes, in, takes place in your life, you don't behave the same way. Amen? There was a movie that I saw some years ago, a couple years ago. I don't know how many of you have seen this movie, but if you haven't seen this movie, I want you to go see it. This was one of the most powerful movies of transformation that I have ever seen. And it's a, it's a Christian movie. I don't know if it's intended to be Christian, but it's, it, it, the message is so strong, it's kingdom. It's called The Same Kind of Different as Me. Anybody saw that movie in here? You haven't seen it? Go see this movie. This movie is a powerful movie. It's a true story. It's a story about a guy who was homeless. And he was violent. And he was creating all kinds of problems. 
And everybody was afraid of him. And this lady, she was a believer, and she decided to go and volunteer in, a, in a, 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 one of those feeding places for the homeless. And this guy came in, and he was angry and miserable, and everybody was afraid of him, and nobody wanted to, to get anywhere near him. And she told her husband, who had, who had cheated on her, that if he wanted another chance, he had to go with her to the shelter. And he went to her with the shelter, and he and this man, they actually ended up becoming friends. And the guy was sleeping out in the cold, sleeping in the bushes, sleeping you know, behind buildings and everything. And he started to work with the guy, and they built a relationship. And without giving all the other details, what is amazing, and when you see this movie, it's, it's almost unbelievable. Today, the two of those guys travel around. I don't know if they still do, but this was just not too long ago. They travel around the country speaking to homeless people and homeless shelters, and they raise money for people in homeless shelters because this guy was completely transformed. And they wrote a book together, I believe. It's amazing. It's an amazing story. But you see, that's what the kingdom does. The kingdom transform you from trash into treasure. You go from being messed up to being blessed up. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, which is another one of our foundation scriptures. Powerful statement. It says, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed. Everybody say being transformed. You see, it's not a complete process. You don't wake up one day and say, you know, I'm transformed. It's a continual process. You are being transformed. You know, last week, you know, you, you did good and then you messed up. And so you got to keep being transformed. You know, as close to perfect as I am, I still mess up sometimes. And I'm just kidding with being close to perfect. I'm much better than I was before, but I'm still in the process of transformation. I'm still learning new things. I'm still learning how to conform to his image. Because his image is what we need. Every day you need to look in the Bible and say, how, how do I look? You know, how, how do I compare? It says, into the same image from glory to glory. In other words, from one period of glory to another period of glory. So it's not like you go backwards. You just keep being transformed from one level of glory to the other. It says, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. So it's from the Lord and his spirit that we are transformed. And transformation is supposed to affect every area of your life. You see, sometimes people think transformation is just spiritual. But when you enter the kingdom, it's supposed to affect your character. It's supposed to affect your career. It's supposed to affect your potential. You're supposed to become a better leader. You know, the kingdom of God have trans has transformed me from being someone who would never get in front of a crowd. I remember when I was in school, when I was in college, because I was conformed to the pattern of the world. The pattern of that world, that time, was so stupid, it was unbelievable, but I, but I bought into it because I was part of the world system. And that is, gangsters never sit in front of the class. And so everywhere I went, I was in the back of the class. And in high school, I used to go in the back of the class and terrorize the class. That was just the way you did things. You, you know, there was no other option. So when I went to college and, you know, I figured, okay, only the soft people will sit in the front of the class. You know, and then one day, I remember one of my professors, they were trying to get me to, this was, this was a communications class. They were trying to get me to do a speech, and I was like, you know, I, I ain't doing no speech. And the professor started to talk to me about the importance of being at the front of the class and the value and, and you know, and all of these kinds of things. And, and after a while, 
I began to become transformed. And then when I, when, I, when I came to the Bahamas, the transformations became more complete. And some of you remember this, this, this incident that I talked about with, with, where I had a meeting with Dr. Miles Monroe, and, and, he, and he said to me, he said, Dave, he said, let me tell you something, man. He said, if you refine your gift, more people are going to call upon you. At that time, my, my gift was limited to street stuff, you know, street preaching and dealing with gangsters and all that kind of stuff. He said, man, you got to be able to speak from the outhouse to the White House. And so I was transformed, and I learned how to speak normal English. <laughs> and God brought me from somewhere where I didn't imagine before to where I am today. Is anybody with me? How do you know when you're really transformed? You know you're transformed when your friends can't recognize you anymore. I remember the day when one of my friends, who's a pastor here in the church now, Pastor Carl Aubrey, he heard about what happened to Dave Burroughs. And the only Dave Burroughs that he knew was the Dave Burroughs that he knew. <laughs> and I remember he, 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 he drove to the blocks where I used to hang out. And he drove just to see, is, is this the Dave Burroughs that they are talking about? And he was so impressed by my transformation that he ended up becoming transformed. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And you see, God fixes you so that you could fix somebody else. Whatever happens for you is not for you. Everybody say, be transformed. Here's the question you need to ask yourself. Do I look like Jesus yet? That's the question that you need to ask. When you wake up in the morning, do I look like Jesus yet? If I don't look like Jesus, I need to go back to work. I need to continue this transformation process. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. My second question to you today is, what is your difference? What's different about you? You see, each of us should have a difference. When we walk into the room, there should be something that distinguishes us as kingdom citizens. You know, I remember um, I, I, I went on a, on a trip with some local politicians. I won't call their names, but... I was new at the Ministry of Youth, and um, you know they would go to the family islands. And when they go to the family islands, you know the minister, the, the permanent secretary, everybody used to go and look for women. And you know they had women all over. And and I remember the the this particular minister to me, he say, he say, Dave, you know, say um, you 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 can be a John the Baptist for me. And I was like, who you think you're talking to, boy? You know who you're talking to. And John the Baptist means you go and, you know, look out, search out the land. And, and, and they're using the Bible. <laughs> and I, I, I said, no, no. I said, I don't, play that, I don't play them kind of games. And so right away, I was distinguished. They knew that there was something different about me. And you know what? They developed a level of respect for me. They never approached me again because I was not conforming to the world. You know what's interesting? Children will naturally conform to their environment. And we tend to conform to our environment unless our minds are renewed. So that's why the word is so important. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. You cannot see without the word. And you see, when the word comes, Transformation takes place because the word is transformative. Moving us from glory to glory. I thank God that I'm moving to another level of glory. Anybody else in here, this, you, you move into another level of glory? And I ain't stopping. I'm going to keep moving every day. I'm going to renew my mind. I want us to stand together as we get ready to close. Say this with me today. Say, 
I am being transformed by renewing my mind. I want you to remember that you have to follow the word this year. Don't allow yourself to be caught up in the pattern of this world. This world really doesn't have a lot to offer you. Well, it does have a lot to offer you. Let me tell you what the world has to offer you. Problems. Lots and lots of problems. You know, it's amazing how many times we conform to the pattern of the world expecting something different than what the devil, what Jesus already identified. Jesus said, the thief comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And he said, I have come to what? So how could we possibly conform to the pattern of this world? When Jesus already identified, he said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So when you get stolen from, when you get killed, and when you get destroyed, all you have to do is say, this is what I bargained for. But if you want peace, if you want joy, if you want happiness, if you want a future, you got to be transformed into the image of Christ because the image of Christ is the only image that works. Every other image is defective. You got to go back to the original.